I'm Richard with EV for You Custom Conversions. Hey, in today's video, we're going to respond to a viewer's question uh, regarding a previous video. And the video had to do with the JLD 404 Intelligent Amp Hour Meter. And in that video, we discussed the uh, uses of that uh, uh, meter, uh, how to connect it, so forth. Well, one of the things that we didn't go into great de detail on was uses for J1 and J2. We talked about it, but we didn't show the actual wiring. And so in today's video, we're going to discuss just, I mean, there's a lot of different uses for these two relays because they're a single pole double throw relay and you can control upper and lower uh, limits for latching or unlatching this relay. So it's got a lot of functionality, but we're going to show you the common uses for it that, that we typically use them for. So what I have here, and let's zoom in a little bit on it, is the kind of the is set up from the rear, if you look at the rear of the JLD 404, the terminals. So one and two are basically your 12 volt power, positive, negative. Five and six are your pack voltage inputs, the positive pack voltage inputs. And then seven, through nine are your shunt. Uh, well, actually seven through 10 would be your shunt. And then 15, 16, and 17 are J2. 18, 19, and 20 are J1. J2 and J1 are relays. Now, I don't remember the exact rating on the relay, but uh, they're just a control relay. So if if you want to control anything with uh, much current at all, you would have this relay control the coil of a, a higher rated relay. So anyway, 16 is common on J2, and so between 15 and 16 you have a normally closed uh, portion of the relay, and between 16 and 17 you have normally open. Same thing with J1 over here, 18 to 19, that's the normally closed uh, contacts, and 19 to 20 are the normally open. Now, the viewer's uh, specific question was, how do we uh, control the charger using the JLD 404? Well, we typically use uh, Elcon chargers and this is my crude drawing of it here you have your ACN and that can be you know uh, 110 to 220 and you have your DC out. Now the chargers come programmed from the manufacturer to match your battery pack. So if your battery pack uh, maximum voltage was uh, 200 volts well then it would come programmed to shut off at 200 volts. Now, there's a little pigtail that is on the JLD, I mean on the uh, Elcon charger. And there's a green wire and a red wire. There are pins one and three. Pin one is green, pin three is red. And those have to be shorted in order to enable the charger to charge. So what we do is we run this pin one and three to 15 and 16 on the JLD 404, which is the normally closed. And we program the JLD 404, and I'm not gonna go into the programming portion of it in this video. We did that in a previous video. But what we simply do is we program J2 to open up at that voltage, 
200 volts and we'd have it open up at 200 or you could make it at 201 or you know 200 and a half volts whatever you wanted to do it's just a redundancy it's a safety feature so that if the internal programming of our charger failed to turn off this charger at the specified voltage then the J2 on the JLD 404 and you could make it either one in this example I'm just using J2 we program it so that J2 will shut this off so we have a redundancy built in the charger internal program is going to shut it off at that specified point and if it doesn't our JLD 404 will okay now on the other end of things we have the I don't know if I can find it here. We have, you know, the two things we want to protect is from overcharging our pack and from over discharging our pack. So we're going to use J1 to protect the pack from over discharging. Well, most controllers you program to a low voltage shutoff, cutoff, so that when your pack gets to a, a certain minimum voltage, the charger, I mean the uh, controller, should shut down. But again, we use the JLD 404 as a redundancy. So in this case, here's my 12 volt auxiliary battery. It goes through our ignition. It can go through, you know, a series of safeties. In this case, I'm showing a safety interlock, which is what we call your, uh, your cutout when you plug in your charger so that the car can't be moved while it's being charged under its own power. So the safety interlock is a normally closed switch relay and then we have an inertia switch and again inertia switch is normally closed when it senses an impact it opens up so all these are in series going to something that controls your controller. In most cases, it would be your KSI, your key switch interface. And so when that doesn't have 12 volts, the controller turns off. And so here's pins 19 and 18 on the J1, on the JLD 404, normally closed but we would program it to open when we reach our minimum pack voltage. Like I said, it's just another safety, a redundancy in the system to protect the most costly component of our conversion, which is our battery pack. So here's a shot of the connection that controls the enable for the Elcon charger. So as I mentioned, it must be shorted, the two pins, green wire and red wire, must be shorted in order to enable the charger to charge. By opening that connection, the charger stops charging. So anyway, when we received the email asking the question, I reviewed the original video we did uh, years ago to see if this question had already been addressed. And, and sure enough, like I said, we touched on uh, uh, the fact that these relays are part of the JLD 404 and some you know, potential uses for them, but we didn't actually show uh, a wiring schematic for how you might use them. So anyway, I want to appreciate uh, the viewer that sent us the question because I think there's probably others that might have uh, had the same question so that's why we went ahead and addressed that question uh, with this video instead of just an email response and if you have any questions about any of our videos we ask that you please email us at info at ev4unow.com and we'd be happy to address the questions either uh, through email, or in this case, uh, one that we think would have um, uh, 
benefit to a lot of folks, then we'll do a video. So as always, I thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.